Today we're gonna upgrade this Cushman hauler from its old lead acid battery packs to a brand new Ocmo lithium battery pack. I'm gonna break down the entire process, what it costs, do a full range test and tell you if I think it was worth it. Lead acid batteries are heavy, high maintenance, and they last about as long as a TikTok trend. Lithium is much lighter, sometimes a quarter of the weight, way faster to charge, and it can last three to four times longer, but it's not cheap. So was it worth it? Let's find out. I'm using this Ocmo 100 amp hour, 51.2 volt LifePo 4 um, for a total of 5120 watt hours batteries. It's a really nice battery. This is the slim fit version and this is meant to fit in a single line of battery trays like what comes in an easy go golf cart. It's roughly half the size of six lead acid batteries, maybe just a tad smaller than that. And it comes with a smart BMS and Bluetooth so I can monitor the charge and the use usage. Really the health of the battery right from my phone. Not only that, it has a state of charge meter too. Cushman, I believe is owned by Textron. Um, and this cart, the manufacturer label on it is, it says easy go on it. So it's basically an easy go manufacturer golf cart. So the upgrades in this golf cart are very similar to what you would find on an easy go golf cart. First, we pulled out the old lead acid batteries. They're super messy, super heavy, uh, and 100% dead. Like this pack was completely dead, so I couldn't even do any before testing on it because it was so dead. The water hadn't been filled in some time. If you look down in the batteries, they were bone dry. They tried to add some distilled water to recover the batteries, but were unable to, so decided that this was a good time to switch to lithium. Once you get all those old batteries out, this is a fantastic time to take a wire brush in there and clean out the battery tray. In this case, the lead acid batteries that were in here had corroded the metal some, it had left deposits on the corners of the tray, and I had to take a screwdriver just to get all of that out. Once I got everything cleaned up, I took a towel and wiped it down really good and put a couple of coats of Rust-Oleum on it to continue to protect it, even though it's not going to have any more lead acid batteries in it. We're gonna drop in this lithium battery, wire it up, double check the polarity, make sure everything's good. Once I had the battery in there, I went ahead and put four holes into the battery tray so that I could put some stainless steel bolts, some nuts and some lock washers in there to make sure that these nuts kept never come loose again. I'm using my DeWalt half inch ratchet that I just got from Home Depot. I absolutely love this tool. We're gonna install this 22 amp onboard smart charger. This designed specifically for lithium ion batteries, LiPo 4 specifically. I simply use four self tapping screws with an extension to get this mounted to the plate. We're gonna drill out the old charge port that's in there and put in this NOCO port and build another custom plate to go where the NOCO port can sit in, where the old EasyGo Textron port sits. After you've taken off the old terminal ring connectors from the old battery set, the only wire that's left that you'll have to cut is the reed switch wire. And typically this is an orange wire. You want to cut this guy as close to the charge port as you can because you're going to take that wire and reroute it later with an eyelid on it and hook it up to your 48 volt positive source from your new lithium battery. Battery. My understanding for this wire is that it's always been a protection that if your charger is actually plugged into the wall, it will not allow your car to move forward. So guess what? If you don't connect this up to a positive source, your cart will not move forward when you turn it on and put your new battery in. So I've gone ahead and installed this I-ring onto the end of the cable, that orange cable that's sitting there. And I'm hooking it into the 48 volt positive system, taking a wrench on both sides and tightening that down since last time I caught some heat for apparently not tightening down the battery terminals enough, even though I did it off camera. My fault for not showing you guys. And then we're gonna drill out the dash and put in the state charge meter uh, with a two inch hole right up front so that you can get to it. This dash has metal in it, so you cannot use a wood blade to cut through it, even though it may seem like plastic. You'll have to use a hole saw to make this two inch saw, and you have to take out the cup holder to get behind it. You even have to cut off a little bit extra to make that work. I had to run the state of charge meter under the cart and then use zip ties to connect everything back up. So <laughs> some of the pros of this, I mean, 
Obviously there's a massive weight savings that you get from a single one of these batteries that weighs about 100 pounds versus almost 382 pounds-ish of the Trojan batteries. So you're gonna drop down to about a quarter of the weight of the batteries that you used to have and still get, I don't know, they advertise 50 miles of range. It'd probably be a little bit less, but I guess that depends on if you have an upgraded motor, upgraded controller, how heavy of a lead foot that you have. I mean, in, in all my experience, I, I think if you babied it, you could probably get closer to 50, but generally I wouldn't expect that. I, maybe a couple rounds on the golf course and you should be fine. Uh, it does charge a lot faster. It charges a lot faster than lead acid. I will say though that, you know, you can only use 50% of the lead acid battery of the range. Whereas on a lithium, you can go down to, well, it says zero, but I mean, 20, 10%. Some of these have alarms that go off around 20% to let you know that you're getting pretty low and it's about time to charge. Like you can use a lot more of the capacity of a LifePo4 battery than you can lead acid. It's gonna have have a much longer lifespan, right? You might get two to four years out of some lead acid batteries, depending on how well you maintain. I, I've heard even five or six, like some people have gotten some good range out of them, but this guy should be good for about 15,000 charge cycles or roughly 10 years. It has a five year warranty on it. So they definitely stand behind that. There is absolutely zero maintenance on this. There's no filling, there's no water, there's no nothing. Um, you just need to keep it topped up every once in a while and, and you should be fine with it. You're not gonna get any acid burns. You're not gonna spill any distilled water on you or on the garage floor or anything when you're trying to fill them up. I mean, there's just no maintenance. And that is, I mean, for me, hands down, the reason why a lithium upgrade makes so much sense. You don't have to water your batteries like a sad plant. They do typically come with a higher upfront cost, right? So Trojan, you know, an eight pack of those batteries is probably a grand. I think a couple years ago, it cost me about 800 hundred bucks when I bought a set for like five years ago. But know that you're gonna have to replace those probably two or three times during the lifespan of what you would get out of a LifePo4 battery. So you're talking about 10 years here, you're talking about two or three sets of batteries. So maybe $3,000 spent when if you just spend 1500 bucks on this upgrade, and I'll have a link down below to the Ocmo site so you can pick this battery up for yourself if it's something you're interested in. I love it, great battery. I've done some independent testing on it sitting like it is. in the and I mean, yes, you're spending a little bit more up front, but in the long run, you're gonna save money over time, especially if you're gonna have your cart for any length of time. And even if you go to sell your cart, having a lithium battery in it is going to give you a higher resale value than having lead acid, because you've already done that conversion. You've already done something that most people desire in modern golf carts. I'd say part of the cons is you're gonna have to upgrade your charger, right? The old gigantic magnetic whatever charger that you can get from Amazon for cheaper or even up to 200 bucks, lead acid chargers don't work for lithium batteries. You have to have the lithium charger. But the nice thing is you're shedding so much weight, you can put this charger on board and it's not really gonna make any difference. It's not actually that much heavier and at 22 amps is still gonna charge your battery pretty fast. So you're not gonna have to worry about that. Most lead acid carts are gonna have a meter up front to let you know the state of charge on the battery. You can't use that same meter. It's not gonna give you the same settings based on the voltage that's in the battery. You need the state of charge that comes out of the CAN bus on the side of this. It's a little two inch dial and it's digital and it's extremely accurate because it talks to the battery BMS and knows exactly how much time you have left. It tells you about faults. It tells you everything you need to know about your system, but you will have to run a wire from the battery compartment up to the front of the golf cart so that you can see your current state of charge. Some carts are gonna need more work to make them fit. Other brands will have trays and different things in there that you need to remove or pull out or clean or whatever to install your new lithium ion batteries. You've obviously got to dispose of your old ones. I did another video on a disposal and where I got the most bang for my buck on the batteries. I'll leave a link to that. If that's something that you're interested in, you might have to explain to your spouse why you spent 1500 bucks when uh, they thought the cart was running just fine before. Give you a little dent to the bank account when in reality, you're saving yourself a ton of money in the long run. Might need a nice little PowerPoint to explain what the points are. Just show her this video. I just tell her, these are all the reasons that we upgraded this cart. This is why it makes sense. We'd be spending three grand over 10 years and instead we're only spending 1500 bucks once. Um, and then this there's like a little minor thing, right? The the shocks and the leaf springs. So if you're shedding 400 pounds of weight out of your golf cart, and then you're dropping in 100, you, you got a net deficit of 300 pounds. And these shocks and springs are set and expect a weight that has all those batteries in it. So on some of these conversions I've done, the cart runs a little rougher 
because there's not as much weight, so it's a little stiffer. The, the shocks are, you know, stuck out and the leaf springs are stuck, you know, non-flexed because there's not enough weight to actually make those flex. Now, if you, obviously, if you load the cart down, it's gonna run just fine, but in some cases, you may notice a little bit stiffer of a ride. I still think that all of the benefits outweigh the, the cons on that. So here's what I got, right? 1500 bucks for this Ocmo battery. It came with the charger. It came with the state of charge meter. I did have to get this NOCO GCP1 port. I'll link to those down below. They make specific ones for specific chargers, different plug-in versions of it, but it's really convenient because then you don't have to lift the seat up just to plug it in and charge it. There's a DC to DC converter. So if you have 12 volt accessories, you have to step down from 48 volts down to 12 to make those work. Lights, radio, speakers, whatever. All those things need 12 volts. This is a 25 amp step down converter. And then lastly, um, a fuse block. If, if you got an old fuse block in there, it now's a great time to upgrade it. I mean, you're already into it. You might as well rip out the old one, put in a brand new fuse block, take care of it, run some new wires where you need to and uh, enjoy your ride. So was it worth it? Yeah, the power, the range, the peace of mind, they're game changers. If you're still running, lead acid in 2025, you're doing your cart dirty. So let me know what I did wrong. Let me know what I could do better. I know you guys will, you always do <laughs> in all of these videos. I can always count on somebody to come in there and tell me whatever specific thing that I didn't do the right way or come in with some comment. So please leave that below because I learned from it and I can do better in the next video. Do tons of lithium type battery type stuff, upgrades, scooters, whatever. This is just another fun cart conversion that I did. Hit that like button, subscribe if this is something that you're interested in and I'll see you on the next one.